Hello, welcome to The Repair Specialist, and first of all, I want to say a huge thank you for clicking through to this video, and for all those that have subscribed. And I'm making this video due to a few simple requests asking how to check engine oil correctly. And so, from what I can gather by these questions is, the operator either wants to perform a service on the vehicle, or they've been running the engine for a little while, and stopped the engine just to have a quick check of the oil, and it's not quite up to the right level, and they want to add to the oil. Either way, checking the engine oil is a simple process, but there are some things to consider. And if you're interested in knowing them, then please keep watching. And at the end of the video, there'll be a checklist summary. So if you really want a foundational understanding of this topic, then please do watch throughout. And whilst the information I'm about to give might be common knowledge for some, it's new and important information for others. And so if I was only checking the oil, then the first thing I would make sure of is that the engine is turned off. And that's because if we don't turn the engine off, we'll never get a good reading on the dipstick. And that's because the sump oil at the bottom there of the engine is always being used. We've got the oil pump that's always picking that oil up and taking it to the different parts of the engine. And so it's being used out of that area. So what we want to achieve is for all the oil to be still and present at the bottom of the sump to take an accurate measurement of how much there is. So my recommendation is always turn the engine off. But before stopping the engine, the vehicle needs parking on a level surface. And that's because we want that oil inside the engine there to be as level as possible in order to get the true reading. Because if it was tilted on its side, as you can see there, we'd get false readings. And another thing to consider is that when the engine was running, that oil was taken up to all of them components in the engine. And now the engine stopped, a lot of that oil is now still trapped between all of that piping network and some of those engine components. And so that means that if some of that oil is still trapped up above, it's not going to give a true reading down below in the sump. Then it's going to show that there's less oil in the engine than what actually is. And so now we've got the engine stopped and it's on a flat surface, I now personally recommend to wait around 10 to 15 minutes for that oil to drop down back to the bottom of the sump. And now what we need to do is remove the dipstick and wipe the measuring end with a cloth or a rag. And this is because we need the dipstick to be totally cleaned of any oil before we take the actual measurement. And so when we take the reading using the dipstick now, there are two things we need to consider. The first one is to make sure that the dipstick is fully down into its tube with no gaps at the top. And this of course will make sure that the measuring end of the dipstick will protrude into the oil as much as it should do for a correct accurate reading. And I'm mentioning this now because it's surprising how easy it is to make this mistake. And another thing to consider when taking the reading, if this oil inside the engine is still hot, that means it's of a thin viscosity. It won't cling so well to the measuring end of the dipstick. And so that means because there'll be less oil clinging to the end there, it will be less visible. It will basically be harder to see, so harder to determine the correct level. So this needs to be taken into account and extra vigilance is necessary. So of course we don't have this problem when the engine's cold and the oil is cold because the oil goes thicker and more of it sticks to the end of the dipstick so it can be seen better and more of an accurate reading can be taken. Okay so the dipstick is fully inserted into its tube and then after a moment or two we'll remove the dipstick and take the reading. And so taking a look at reading the dipstick we can see that when we look at the end it has two points and it's generally accepted that the oil mark needs to come between these two points. And taking a look at another type of dipstick, one that's more common to vehicles, we can see that between these two points there's a crisscross effect instead of the two dots. And as with the first dipstick, it's generally accepted that the oil level comes up to the middle within this crisscross effect. But as long as the level goes no higher than the upper limit on either or on the lower limit on either, then all should be okay. There shouldn't be any seizures or any damage of the engine. And so now we've taken the reading and we know how much oil is in the sump. If any needs to be added, then it's best to add this in small stages. So we pour a little bit in and then we check the oil. Then pour a little bit more in, then check the oil. But take into account as well, it will take a minute or two for the oil to trickle down from the top of the engine and down into the sump in order to give a good accurate measurement. So let's just finish off by summarising the points of how to check engine oil correctly. First, we need to be parked on a level surface. We turn the engine off and then we wait a little while for the oil to drop down. I usually wait between 10 and 15 minutes. 
and then check the dipstick to see how much oil is actually in the engine before we start and any oil that needs to be added can be added in small increments whilst checking the oil level in between ensure that the dipstick is fully inserted down into its tube to get the correct level and always be extra vigilant of the oil mark on the dipstick itself to get the right level and something I'd like to add here as a little disclaimer is consult your owner's service manual that comes with your vehicle before you undertake any work and the principles of what we've been talking about applies to all types of four-stroke machinery. So it's not just cars, lorries and vans and that sort of thing. It's lawn mowers and four-stroke brush cutters, all types of four-stroke garden machinery and diggers to bulldozers. Basically, if the machine has a four-stroke engine, then the principles of what we've been talking about apply. And so at that, I really want to thank you for watching and I hope that this video and its content and this summary has really been beneficial to you. And so please, if you have benefited from this video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you so much for watching.